Hello, good evening, and welcome to the Now Debate. I'm Jared Walters, coming at you guys once again uh, with tonight's special guest, Michael Hilton, and obviously our very own Richard Oliver. Michael is a men's mental health coach uh, who has a fascinating story and basically is very, very straight to the point and helps people with personal development, helps people with success and prosperity, and is here to share his thoughts with us this evening on uh, on men's mental health, on uh, basically overcoming adversity, and everything that's happening in the world, and how it's affecting our mental health, and how it's affecting people. Michael, Richard, how are you guys? Good. good. Very good, man. Very good. Thanks for having me on, man. I'm excited to be here. Thanks for having me. Uh, thanks for having. Uh, thanks for ha uh, coming on, dude. It was uh, one of your videos that kind of appeared very synchronistically on Facebook when I was recording my own story um, back in uh, about two or three months ago, about two months ago now, and it, the video was quite. Uh, we'll put a link to it in the description below. But the video was quite something, to be perfectly honest. You telling your own personal story, very, 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 very raw and quite viscerally. And um, I found it very, very authentic and inspirational. And it was it was after that that um, I decided to, to, to tell you about the show and we got talking. So, Mike, I'd be very... Um, I, I would love it if, if you would give us a little bit of background to your, your story and sort of your journey, where you've, uh, where you've been sort of over the last few years and where it's got you to now. Is, would, would that be okay? Yeah, that's absolutely fine, man. That's absolutely fine. So... I'd probably say my journey started, if I was to go back, um, I'd go back 15, 15 what was it, 15, and, 15 years ago nearly now, that's where my journey started, so I was an alcoholic and drug addict uh, back then, struggled with uh, addiction, well I say addicted to alcohol and drugs, I had, I had issues with uh, alcohol and cocaine, um, tried all kinds of different drugs, um, towards the end of my drug use. And my drinking, I started indulging in smoking crack, cocaine. So, you know, that was quite a journey for me. Um, you know, just left a trail of destruction and chaos in my life, man. You know, and um, it was a pretty painful place to be. And that kind of, you know, if I go back a little bit further than that, like my, my drinking, I'd say my drinking started getting out of, the ha out of hand probably around the age of 19, 20, when I was 19, 20. That's when my drink kind of really started getting out of hand. So then I... Fast forward, you know, chaos, mayhem, bankrupts, robbing people, stealing money, generally just being a fucking ass to human beings and uh, didn't really like people. And, you know, it's just where I, I kind of got to my life, you know, cheating, stealing, all that kind of stuff. And then I, I, I got sober, got clean and got sober and my life started to change. And I, I kind of went on this journey and I think uh, December 28th, this year I'll be I'll be 15 years sober on December the 28th. So oh, brilliant. Um, cheers, man. So you know, and that's been a journey in itself. You know, starting that journey from that man because you know, if you would have asked me back then, you know, my story, I had this story, right? And I used to tell people all the time. I'd sit in the pub and they'd say, I'd say to them, look, I was put on this planet for one thing and one thing only, and that's to drink, right? And I truly believed that, right? I truly believed that that was my purpose in life. Right. When you're young, it's, it's not a bad purpose. Right. You get drunk, you sleep with women, you, you know, do crazy things. You have good fun with your friends and stuff like that. But what happened is the consequences started getting worse and worse. And then when I I knew that I was in bother when I tried to actually stop drinking, I didn't really want to stop drinking. I just wanted to stop the circumstances, uh, the consequences that were happening from it. And, um, you know, I couldn't. I found myself in a place where I, I couldn't. And when I did stop, I was really fucking miserable and unhappy. So I did get to a point where I stopped, started rebuilding my life. And then, you know, I went on this other journey. You know, I'd met my I'd met my partner in recovery. Um, we had got married. We just had a kid. But on that journey, on, on, on that journey, I'd become like an entrepreneur, started my own business, started working. Um, and I, I often say that, I had done, I'd done a lot of work on myself in the sense of to quit drinking, but I still always struggled with like my mental health, all the, the stress, the anxiety, overwhelm, depression was just constantly always there. And it was like, my life was like living on a roller coaster. It was constantly up, down, up, down and all over the place. And, um, 
as I progressed and I started building my business, what happened was I started getting more and more lost in my thoughts. I started getting more and more lost in my feelings. And then what happened is work become my new addiction. And I started using work as a way to to change the way I felt about myself, like all my identity. See, like before, all my identity was, like I told you my story, my identity was alcohol. And when I first stopped drinking and alcohol was taken away from me, I cried for three days because I felt like I'd lost a very close man, fa- uh, member of family, right? Because my identity, who I was, was tied up in that. And the identity I'd created with my friends. It's like, oh, come on, Mike, we want fun Mike back, we want this. So I'd done that in my business as well. I created my identity in my business. And um, basically, I, I, I just went on this journey of building my business and I was working ridiculously long hours. I wasn't looking after my mental health. I wasn't looking after my physical health. I was neglecting my duties as a father. I was neglecting my duties as a husband. I'd kind of become the man that I said I'd never be to my son, the kind of like the father that I never really had in my life. I'd become that man. Um, and it got to the point where I'd created this fucking, I'd created this tiny little life like this around a business right? I, I'd got it back to front. And I, I, and I find a lot of guys do this. They, they build a business and a tiny little life around it. And it was just chaotic. And I was constantly late home. I was constantly calls with my clients, you know, dinner time, picking up my phone, family time, you know, and I never had no time for me and my family. And, and, and as a result of that, you know, through my choices, decisions and my behaviors, you know, I ended up literally burning my business to the ground and getting to a point where I'd kind of tried to take I'd kind of been in this place when I was drinking and I went to take my life and my mum caught me. Um, and then I got to that point again where I was very suicidal. I was depressed in myself and I was very suicidal. And, um, you know, we went off when I burnt my business to the ground. I said, look, I need a break. We went away to Devon Cliffs. You know, little tip for anyone, if you're feeling suicidal, Devon Cliffs isn't particularly the best place to <laughs> fucking go. Right? <laughs> <laughs> there's plenty of fucking places to throw yourself off of right um, Jeez, yeah. and in my mind I was kind of kind of you know fantasizing about that you know I was I, I was just like you know I've become a burden on my wife's life and my son's life I wasn't a good father I wasn't a good husband they'd be better off without me no one really likes me I've be, I'm a selfish prick I'm an arse all this kind of stuff all this self negative talk and um some of it true as well that's the thing you know people do say eliminate self-negative talk but some self-negative talk is actually really beneficial because the self-negative talk is actually presenting truth in your life and that's what it was doing to me but um the problem was is i didn't have a solution to that and uh we went devon cliffs and by that time i was asking myself a lot of questions like why why has this happened to me you know poor old me you know i've been sober this many years i shouldn't be experiencing this bloody bloody blah, blah, blah and anyway it was one day and we went back to well i've been back to devon cliffs a few times and we was there uh a few months ago actually we took the family back there and i was walking and doing a run if you go on my facebook page and scroll down you'll see it. i was doing a, a run on the beach where i had this kind of you know moment what kind of made really a it kind of shifted my life to shift my life so i'm walking along the beach and i'm just asking myself the question it's like why me why has this happened to me like poor old me you know why don't i ever cut get a break in life and, and all this kind of stuff and then I was walking along the beach and I just had this massive realisation some people say it's Jesus some people said it was God I don't know right I, all I know is I just had this 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 voice I call it the voice mm. this in my gut just say to me Mike the reason you're depressed and this has happened to you is because you've got the inability to accept reality for what it is and that just stopped me in my tracks just that that voice I, you know and it was like Mike got the inability to accept reality for what it is that's your pain and suffering and i was like fuck like where have i heard that or read that and i i got my phone out i was looking if i read that have i heard that anywhere and i I never did it was something that just arose from me Mm. um and then that was the point there i drew a line in the sand after spending some time there and you know crying and feeling sorry for myself and i drew a line in the sand and i kind of stood one side I was like, this is who I am. This is the man that I've created. The results that I've got in my life are down to the actions and beliefs and the stories that I, I've got and I've taken. And I stepped over the line and I said, and this is the rebirth of a new person. Like, this is my journey now and I'm going to do what I can to be a better father, a better husband. 
a better man, a better friend, a better leader, you know, and stop fucking lying and start <laughs> telling the truth, right? Firstly, to myself. Mm-hmm. Um, and that was my journey, man. And that's basically my story in a nutshell, man. There's a lot of people that and I, 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 I've come across this a lot and I, when, I've, when I've dealt with people and that's the kind of place I come from is obviously, and the same with Richard as well, is come from like what we call it spirit, but there's many different, as you say, interpretations of it, but it basically is that, as you said, that inner voice. And yeah. I think it kind of echoes a little bit like, um, I remember I think it's Eckhart, Eckhart Tolle who said, um, mm-hmm. one of the first things you need to do is accept something that is. Because it can't mm. be isn't. It can't be mm. is and isn't at the same time. But if mm. you know it is, that's the place that you can work from. Because once you know where it is, you know where kind of where you are. And and I think that's that's definitely something that uh, you know that that, that it, it takes a lot to get to that place. And and, and I can attribute that to quite a few things in my own life and I'm, I'm, and uh, I'm sure sure Richard can as well. So what sort of things are you working on at the moment or sort of how, how are you viewing sort of mental health at the moment with regards to people and sort of everything that's going on in the world then? Well, I, I think like for myself, if I go back to that and as I started on that journey and I've gone deeper into this work and I've looked at stuff and I, and I agree like what Eckhart Tolle says and, and, and that there, you know, it's like, you know, I've I done a video today talking about talking about this. Like, you know, one of the biggest struggles that men have um, when it comes to changing their life, and I speak to men, women as well can have this, but I'm speaking to men. The biggest struggle that men have when it comes to changing life is they can't get fucking honest with themselves. They bullshit themselves. They lie to yeah. themselves, right? They can't accept reality for what it is. The shit results that they're creating, or the shit results that they've got, they've created, and they're responsible for that. Yeah. And... Um, I think that that was massive for me. So, you know, when it comes to mental health, when it comes to mental health, it's like it's like anything. It's like your physical health. If you do fuck all with your physical health, if you just sit on the city eating shit, you're going to get fat, overweight. You're going to have a lack of energy. You're going to have a lack of drive. You're going to have a lack of inspiration. And you're just sitting there watching TV all the day and you just neglect your your body. It's going to get tired. It's going to get overweight. It's going to get heavy. And, and the mind, the mind, like mental health is just the same. Like guys don't think anything about going to spend 30, 40 grand on a new car or a new watch or a thousand pound on a new phone, all the stuff that makes them look good. But the last thing they ever look at investing in is their own mental health and their own mindset. And I think, you know, what's happened in COVID, like let's just say COVID, right? That's what's mm-hmm. happened in COVID is a lot of men have been exposed for what's really fucking going on in their life, really going on in their life. Mm-hmm. Like when I was on the beach and I was uh, a few months ago and I was sharing a story and I was like showing all these rocks and I was down there the day before and the tide was in. I said, all this shit here, all these dips and fucking holes and all these rocks, you can't see, right? That was my life when all my ducks were in a row, right? When everything was okay, when there was no challenges or anything, when I was making good money. But what happened is I started getting exposed for who I really was and the tide was going out. And when the tide goes out, it exposes all the shit, leaves all the shit on the floor, right? All the seaweed, all the, all the fucking rocks and all that. And, and I think with COVID now, I think that has exposed a lot of men um, as to what's really going on in their lives, right? Hence why there's a lot of men suffering at the moment. So for me, one of the things that, that I do and I focus a lot on is I think it's, it's really important for men to have an animal to hunt. As men, we, we, we're... We're, we're geared up to uh, have goals, have things we're working towards. You know, if you go back to tribal time, that's what we used to do. We had goals. We had objective things, you know, protect and provide. And we would each day get up and we would go and do that. We live in a modern world now where, okay, it's not as, I don't, I, I don't know, is it quite as, as dangerous as it used to be? I kind of question that now, right? <laughs> but mate, let's just say, for instance, it's not as, as dangerous as it used to be, right? And a lot of men have lost their purpose. They've lost their way. So, you know, the mental health that they're struggling with is because they've not got an animal to hunt. They've got no purpose. Their only purpose is to get to Monday to Thursday to pour alcohol and stick powder up their nose and get fucking wasted at the weekend because they've got nothing else to focus on that excites them in life. That's the only thing they have that they look forward to, man. No? What's what's your thoughts, Rich? Well, 
Um, I think, you know, that inner voice, Mike, was, it sounds like you were doing a lot of soul searching. Mm. And in that yeah. moment in the beach, your soul answered back. Mm. That's, like the, that's the real you. That's the real you that we always suppress. It's just life suppresses it. Um, as, as someone who has come um, through mental health issues, which were, mine came about from an accident, I I beat myself up. I beat myself up um, over decisions I've made, and I've had some dark moments. But I, I, it's, uh, there's always something telling me I should pat myself on the back for getting up, and not for falling. And that that little that little thing that tells you, you just you know you're not going to get it right. There isn't a handbook to life. You're going to make mistakes. We're designed, and all this system is designed to make us sort of like betray. It's like social media. We betray something on social media. We betray an image, right? Well, That's what it's. It's betraying an image of what you want, like an expectation, and you know, it. There isn't. There isn't enough for men to come forward and say, you know, it's like with all this, like you said, sexism going on and these rights and their rights and men got to be like this and men got to be like that. You can't just expect someone in their 40s or even 30s to just be this, you know, this epitome of man. Mm. You know, when when the system isn't, hasn't been designed that way. It hasn't. You know, you've got I, oh, my, lots of my friends I grew up with, right? And I was guilty of it. We live for the weekend, get absolutely blasted, mm -hmm. right? And that was it. That's what we do, right? Mm -hmm. And some of them took it further than that. They, they, it was more than that. They, they, the person they felt when they were on coke, or they were like being the lad, they, they tried to aspire to that all the time. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Why wouldn't, why wouldn't you? You know why wouldn't you? So it's there's so much that we, we just can't. We just we just sort of turn a blind eye to it. You might, you know, like years ago, you say everything happened behind closed doors, you know, and it was it's that mentality. I think the men's health. Mm -hmm. so it's alright for women to gather and talk about how they're feeling and have a good cry and say they like this and do an But men, you know, we, when you're around your men, you feel oh, I'm feeling most most of your mates will go oh, shut up, you puff or something like that. They, that's what they'll say, mm -hmm. yeah. you know. Yep. It, it, it needs, it needs to change. And it, looking in would be and saying, I fucked up or I, I took the wrong road. And it can be over years. There's, there's nothing wrong with that. There's no, there's no shame in it. There's no, there's no, there's no fucking shame in it. You know, so yeah, I'm all for it. I'm all for it. If you go out and help people and you get men to open up and say that they, they, you know, they don't feel up to the standard. I think that's fucking great. I think you also got yeah. you got to look at the flip side as well because it's just, <clears throat> what I found when I was go, going through this sort of transformation over the last couple of years is you've got to congratulate the stuff yourself for the stuff that you do right as well because there's a lot of, I I don't know about anyone else but for me personally there was a lot of that mentality of putting yourself down and I was thinking as I, as I was sort of sort of just putting everything together for tonight and sort of um collecting my thoughts for tonight it was like the amount of times that like um like what the thing i'm doing in my life now is what i most want to be doing it's not making me a ton of money but it's fulfilling me it's fulfilling me in in here in 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 this in the sort of soul then if that in, in, in if if that makes sense but we spent so much of our life feeling sort of unfulfilled and sort of not speaking out because of how other people may feel about us or how other people may portray us or even just this sort of like lack of a frame of reference between people you know this kind of the kind of phrases we throw out there like oh, or everyone feels that way or everyone feels this way or everyone knows that why don't you know that or everyone likes this why don't you like it this it's like we've created this society that is not conducive and i think that is starting to change i think you're seeing seeds of it starting to change but we are seeing this society where it's 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 for 
it, now it's becoming polarized. It's becoming completely and utterly sort of where where it's gone from. You know, you 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 don't agree with me, so that, um, why don't you agree with me? To you're stupid for agreeing with me. You're you're you 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 must be mean to cause me harm by not agreeing with me. And I think that's what the the pandemic is doing, especially like with the issues of of masks. Give you an example. I'm disabled. I'm I'm partially blind. Literally, if I'm wearing a mask, it cuts off the and most useful parts of my vision. Now I could have a pass or an exemption, but do I really want to face the wrath of people there that see me not wearing a mask and they have to because you know someone's going to be really nasty or narky about it and you know you're going to have problems getting into premises and that sort of things because business has been put under so much pressure so this this massive sort of polarization going on at the moment and i think it's i don't know whether it's it's stopping people from having these conversations or if it's forcing them to actually have these internal conversations and i think part of that i don't know if you if, if uh, you you um agree with this or not but for a while a part of that becomes a bit of cognitive dissonance. The world that you are seeing inside, in other words, the old ways, and the world that you see it outside are almost in conflict. Does that does that kind of make sense? Sorry, I kind of went a bit around the bush a bit there. Me or, or, or Richard? Um, both of you. I'll throw it out. Oh, Richard, go on. Um, yeah, well, I, I mean, it's, it's all about this this whole thing. And I can't see past it, and I wish I could. It, it, you know, this is going to cause mental health issues, right? Which I think are way more harmful than this virus is appearing, right? And I think the knock-on effect of that with our schools, with um, the way we are treating each other, with the, some of the responses. Somebody put a response on about... Um, there was a gathering in Kifiri, and people took their kids. And the responses were, I hope your kids catch COVID. I hope you catch COVID. I hope they suffer. And it was, a, and I'm not joking, there was hundreds of comments, right? I'm getting reports of people grassing on their neighbours, taking pictures of them. You know, it's like, it's such, it, you know, it's such a, it's, such, it's the way the system if it makes you do things like that, there's a problem with it. Yeah. If it makes you not see the love and seeing the people you care about and, and being a sociable creature is what we are, and anything that stops that is neg, right? Anything that stops us having the ability to see each other and, and read our facial expressions and just be, no, we're all in the same boat. If we, it doesn't have to be this divide. If you want to wear a mask, wear a mask. If you don't, you don't. If you want to go and see your loved ones, go and see them. There shouldn't be a law stopping you to go and see your loved ones. It's, in, it's ridiculous. That is not freedom by any stretch of the imagination. And already in a situation where you're trying to work, you're trying to be a provider, you've got all this, which is just put the bricks on everything. I should imagine our mental health issues are going to skyrocket. Mm -hmm. no. You're going to stock it. Mm -hmm. uh, I, I, I don't know if you agree with that, Mark, but I, you know, I, I mean, what do you do? I'd like to know. I, I wanted to ask this question. Do you ever have sort of a like a relapse, or do you ever, you know, find yourself your mind trying to drag you back to that point, or are you pretty solid in, you know, what you've gone through? Um, that's a good question, man. Like for myself, and and this is like what I say to the guys. It's like anything. If you if you if you stop going to the gym, you know, you you, you go backwards, right? You just go backwards. You stop going to the gym, stop exercising. Your muscles stop growing. They start deteriorating, wasting. You know, start eating shit again. You start feeling like shit. So it's the same as mental health. Like for me, it's an everyday thing. I have my routines. I do every day. I have my work where I work on myself every day. You know, I have my goals that I'm working towards. And like, you know, like this was a great thing, like what you said there. Like why I feel that my mental health didn't suffer as much as, uh, and the guys that were in my group, right, why their mental health didn't suffer as much as a lot of other people that I know, right? Not just because they're in my group and I'm something fucking special, but the reason was is we had 
things to focus on, right? So we have animals, we had, like I say, animals to hunt in our relationship, okay? So like, you know, like for example, we work on five key areas, self, health, wealth, relationships, and having fun, okay? Pandemic happened, scamdemic, whatever you, uh, you know, I call it the scamdemic happened. Um, at the beginning, we didn't know what it was about. So we all kind of like, okay, this looks, this looks like it could be something. So we, we stayed indoors, we applied, and like I said to the guys, okay, so maybe our goals in, finances and business is going to kind of drop down a little bit um but then what we get to focus more on is our relationship with our kids and our wife we get to focus on our fitness more right so those levels come up more and i think the thing that really helped us um through this time and i've shared it before is we had things to focus on if we hadn't had our goals and hadn't had our group and hadn't had our things to focus on we would have all suffered just the same as others you know, and for me, it's like an everyday thing. I'm always looking to, I, I call it playing the 1% game. I'm always looking to be 1% better today than I was yesterday and constantly move forward and, and, and become that better father, that better husband, better leader, better business owner, better man in the world, right? Help other people. Um, and I think for me, that, that was my saving grace. That was my saving grace through COVID is having this system that I have to have things to focus on yeah mm. i found that with this with this channel it's uh basically this what kept me going is knowing to you know have to uh, wake up each day and, and work on videos or work on something relating to to the work that we're, we're we're doing here um what 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 about what you're seeing in the in the community sort of outside your groups then mike with regard like what richard said about people's attitudes towards each other and and that sort of thing what do you think is, is going on there well you know if i talk if i speak about about men because i've i don't wear a mask i've not wore a mask um and i i actually had a confrontation with a guy this guy you know, confronted me, um, you know, I was in a shop with my two little kids. And look, you know, I've got to take responsibility of that as well. I've got to take responsibility of that. I'm I'm going out. I'm not going to wear a mask, right? Because it goes against what I believe, right? I keep, but I also understand that I don't want to be a fucking arsehole to other people. So I keep my distance from people. You don't want to, if you want to wear a mask, that's fine. I ain't got a problem with that. You know, we'll keep our distance. You know, we can two meters apart. You're not getting close to me. Um, and I had an incident that come up and um, I think the world we live in today is like you say, you know, going back to talking about this journey of men and where men, where men have got to is, and like Richard was saying, men are fucking lost. Men are lost. Men yeah. don't know what, men don't know whether they're coming or going. If they try and lead their family, they're told that they're fucking sexist pigs. Um, they suffer with, you, you've got toxic masculinity. Uh, patriarchy, they demise patriarchy, the man, and I don't want to make this like poor, us poor old men, but men have become over the last few years have come under attack, right? That's, 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 that's see it. yeah, that, that's, that's there for to see. And I think so many men are lost and so confused and they've put themselves in boxes and they don't step up and don't speak up and they've lost their balls, right? They don't st speak up, they don't step up, they don't stand for anything anymore right and um we've got to a stage now where uh, i attended an event and i was talking about um this was uh, a couple of years ago and i saw about toxic masculinity now there's 60 people in this audience and i'm sitting in there and they're talking about toxic masculinity this and we need to eradicate this we need to eradicate that and we need to eradicate anger and and men's men's competitiveness all this kind of shit that they was talking about and and i just said like you are not ever going to eradicate that from men. That's thousands of fucking years of evolution, right? There's nothing wrong with competitiveness. There's nothing wrong with anger, right? And I'll get onto this in a minute, talking about like mental health, how, how actual stress, anxiety, and depression is actually working for you, not against you, right? But I was talking about all this stuff. All this stuff they were saying, I was like, it's not about eradicating it because you're not going to eradicate it. And then what you're going to get is a bunch of men that sit indoors when they get angry, shaming and guilting themselves for getting angry and beating themselves up even more because anger is actually a useful tool. What instead and what I'm seeing now and, and answer to your question is, is men have just lost the ability to handle their emotions. They don't know how to harness their emotions. They don't know. 
So they don't know how to use anger in, a, in an effective way. So they go from anger to rage, right? Mm. In a matter of zero to 100. They go from yeah. anger to rage to aggression. Like this guy in the shop with me, right? Just has no control of her, of no control over himself. That's what I see as a problem with now. Like we live in a world now where us three can sit down and have a conversation and Richard might fucking hate Donald Trump. I like Donald Trump. Um, George, you might be sitting on the fucking fence of Donald Trump and we can all just sit there and have a decent conversation <laughs> yeah. about it, right? And yeah. just go, okay, I see your point of view. I get your point of view. Okay, I can understand that. But no, it's like, fuck you. You're a cunt. I ain't talking to you anymore. Get out of my life. Do you know what I mean? Yeah. You know? And, and that's kind of the culture that we live in now. And I see that with a lot of men is they don't know how to, um, they don't, don't know how to harness this masculine energy anymore. So it just comes out in aggression and rage. And that's what happens, right? And that's why we mm -hmm. have so much violence going on, right? Mm -hmm. And I said to these people, it's not about eliminating it. It's about teaching them how to use it in a correct way. Well, I've always had a belief, right? You know, it's like football matches, right? You've got a fucking bunch of boys now, right? And and they got the opposite team, right? And you said, as you said, it's nature. And they see them boys, them boys, and they don't want to scrap, right? Mm -hmm. And yet you've got all these fucking police officers now. They mustn't fight because, yeah, it does get lazy because it's pent up. Yep. If you had a little arena outside, right, with a couple of St. John's ambulance men there, right, with some fucking bandages... And you just let them go into a court and kick the shit out of each other. They'd all probably end up going to the pub and going, fuck, that was a good fight. <laughs> yeah. They've they, they got that out of their system, right? Mm -hmm. I used to be, I've dormant for years, right? And most of it, I tried to get out and not fighting, if I could. I, I, If somebody was aggressive with me, I'd ask him why. I'd say, right, what's the matter? What are you so pissed off for? Is everything okay? Okay, what's that, man? You, you know, have you had a shit day or somebody pissed you off? And you'd see their level. As my level, I'm staying calm. You'd see their level calm down. And mm. they start talking. Said, "Oh my, I fucking I had this shit." My missus, it tell you some stories. And before you know it, they're like, oh, "Sorry, but for getting arsy, right?" And mm. you could, you know, other on other circumstances, we could have just kicked the shit on each other. They would have been locked up for the night. But we we resolved something. And I think it's like my grandfather, right? He was he was a man. I idolized, right? And he was a man's man, right? He worked in the pit. Mm -hmm. He never <laughs> laid a finger on my nan, right? Never even contemplated. It wasn't because she was more frightening, but <laughs> he, he would never think of it, right? And he was a man's man. And he, even in his funeral, they said he wasn't racist. He didn't like anyone. <laughs> <laughs> he, he didn't like anyone, right? If you were, if you were his neighbor or Welsh, you were like, you you would you would have with the end of a bell, and it, that's how he that's how he grew up. But he was the right kind of man, and I think all this with this you know you you can't do this and you can't do that. It's it's confusing, you know. It's confusing. Mm. It's it's really confusing. What we're supposed to be and where where we've come from, and we've literally taken a massive leap from. Like going from say the nineties to now, right? When you're coming out of the seventies when men were fucking men, right? And all that nonsense. Mm -hmm. But it is such a it's such a, a leap. It doesn't give anybody to actually catch up with it. And I know women have had an art run, right? I'm not I'm never I am I am an advocate for that shit, right? Women have been oppressed for long yeah. enough, right? Yeah. In, in all around the fucking world, right? I am an advocate against that shit. And I you know, I think they should have equal rights across the board for any given thing, right? If that's what they desire, then fuck me, they should have it. They just, they more than deserve it. But to this demasculinity thing and on this, you know, is is fuck it. It's it's not right. We haven't got to that stage. Mm -hmm. You only have to look out the fucking window to notice we're not at that stage. You know, people fight. They kill each other, right? You've got, again, you know, they, you've got police brutality. You see the coppers coming in, whacking the fuck up to people who were just standing there with a banner and saying, I think this is bullshit. Mm -hmm. You know, a cop over the head of the fucking truncheon, that's adding fuel to the fire. Mm -hmm. So 
you know, it's it's the same it's the same thing. It's the same thing. And and yeah, I I, I I suffered I had an injury and I started having panic attacks and I never I would never wish it on on my worst enemy, right? And it it was incredible. And it took me I'm trying to think, it's taken me nearly two and a half years, right? To get to where I am now. And a couple of times, I'm, I'm not going to lie to you, I nearly lost, right? I nearly lost the fight. And and it, it, it took me telling myself every every neg thing that come into my awareness that wanted to drag me down to that fucking bottomless pit, there was another voice saying, well, look at all the things you've done. Yeah. Look at all the times you've sacrificed. Look at all the times you you took this on the chin, or look at all the times you said this happened so that person wouldn't be affected. And it's that constant fucking up and down, that seesaw. And, you know, I'm, I'm at a point now where that voice is way louder than the neg. And, mm. you know, I, I, I'm, I'm grateful for it. And I don't think it's, I don't think it's any wrong with you. I don't think there's anything wrong with being open, right? And I'm, I'm quite famous for it. I'll probably say things I fucking shouldn't sometimes. That probably should keep to myself. But if you, if I don't say, we don't know me. Yeah, and that's how exactly. I try to. I, I try. That's how I try to be. And you know, and we need more people to just say, "Fucking hell, it's all right. It's all right to be feel like that." As a, especially as a bloke, it's all right to feel like everything's fucking too much. Mm. Absolutely, absolutely, and. <clears throat> You, you you were talking, um, Mike, about how anxiety and anger can, can actually be helpful to you, or is actually helping you. Mm-hmm. So he wanted to sort of say, to sort of elaborate on, on that a bit, because I'm really interested in that. It was a, just a really interesting sort of statement, because most people see, I had my first panic attack in about four years, um, two days ago, and it took me about five or six hours to come down from it, and that was through being partially blind in the middle of Liddles, wearing a friggin' mask and not seeing where the hell I was and where I was going. It had mm-hmm. that much of an adverse effect on me <clears throat> at that point. Now, I have, I, I basically do it, um, I don't go out that much anyway. Um, and it's the only place when I go to like a supermarket I have sort of put one on um, because I don't really go out anywhere sort of public, to be perfectly honest with you at the moment um sort of anyway so i haven't been actually put in that position that was the first time i was put in that position but you 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 mentioned about sort of anxiety and 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 that sort of thing um uh being beneficial um do you want do you want to focus can we focus a little bit more on that for for a sec yeah man yeah man yeah definitely so i think one of the one of the problems you get in in the self-help world and one of my bugaboos with the self-help world is is it's all about changing how you feel all the time and trying to make you feel unique and special. Like, there's things where they say, oh, you're good enough just the way you are. Well, okay, that's fucking bullshit. Was Hitler, was Hitler good enough just the way he was? No. Yeah, no. <laughs> no, right? You know, so that's complete bullshit, you know. When I was drinking and stealing money and robbing people, was I just good enough the way I was? Did I just need to love myself a little bit more, you know? Um, see, I'm a special little snowflake. No, it's bullshit, right? And um, again, like when it comes to depression, anxiety and stress, is, is we're led to believe that, um, that they're bad, that we shouldn't experience them. Or when you experience them, you need to change it or you need some kind of pill or potion yeah. to, um, to alleviate it, right? Yeah. Now, the matter of fact, like I call, I call like stress, anxiety, overwhelm, and all that the energy management light of your life. All they are is there to show you something about your life, right? So I'll give an example for me. I suffered really bad with anxiety, right? And I would have panic attacks at times, right? But I suffered really bad with anxiety. When I kind of started learning this stuff, I understood, right? Okay, so. One of the reasons why I suffered so bad with anxiety is because I was a fucking chronic liar, right? I was a chronic liar. I was always telling fucking lies. I, I got to a point where I, was, I would sit there and I'd think, what did I say to John? What did I say to Peter? What did I say to Bob? I wonder if that girl's going to know that I've got a girlfriend and I've just slept with her, right? And I'd become a fucking liar. My life was chaos, right? 
So I had created my own anxiety. I'd created that. And the anxiety was there just to show me, Michael, you're a fucking liar, right? And this behavior that you've got, if you continue on this, it's going to intensify your anxiety because the more I lied, the more fucking bullshit I told, the more it intensified my anxiety. So I kind of describe it like, you know, you're here and life's pretty good. Then you start feeling something like anxiety, stress, overwhelm, like in the middle here. And that's the engine management light of your life coming on to show you something about your life. And then you get to the point at the end where men just kind of break down, right? They have their breakdown mm -hmm. because they're not dealing with distress and anxiety or understanding what it's showing them. What they're doing is suppressing it, right? Yeah. So they suppress it with drink, drugs, medication, uh, wearing that mask that I'm okay, right? So one of them is anxiety. Another thing for anxiety is like I used to think a lot into the future. I used to sit there and think about stuff that hasn't happened, right? Yeah, here's a prime example for you. It's like, <clears throat> ever had an argument with the missus or, or, or the woman, and you've gone out and slammed the door, you're walking about, and you think, right, when I get back, or just someone in general, when I get back, if she says this, I'm going to say that. Then I'm going to say this, and she says this, I'm going to say that. And you create this whole fucking story in your head, and you create all this yeah. anxiety about it, and you get in, and none of it happens, right? That's one of the things that I see with people that suffer with a lot of anxiety. So, like, I like to bring it back to the fact is, the fact is Okay, so, so tell me, what is the anxiety showing you about your life? So like I said earlier about when I was walking along the beach, I was depressed. And I was asking myself the question, and then their realization come that the depression was there to show me the life I had created was all down to me. Like the depression was created by me. I created my own depression. And the depression was there to show me if you don't change this course in your life, you're going to lose your wife, you're going to lose your family, you've lost your business, what else are you going to lose? And you're going to take your own life. So they're there to show you something, to guide you, right? They only get intensified and out of hand when we don't pay attention to them. Yeah. So again, like anger, people say anger's a terrible thing, you shouldn't be angry. What well, fucker don't get angry? And look, you know, let me tell you this. If someone breaks into my house, right, and I'm indoors with my three little kids and my wife, right, I'm going to use anger to disarm that person or to protect my family. So yeah. anger is not a bad thing. No. It's how you, you use anger, right? Stress and anxiety isn't a bad thing. It's how you interpret it. It's your relationship to it, right? So, you know, if, you, if your relationship to anxiety, stress, and uh, is a bad thing, You'll never learn the lessons of what it's trying to show you about your life. And what you'll do is you'll spend your life trying to run away from it. And what will happen is it will continue to keep intensifying because it's trying to show you something. Like the engine management light of your car. Yeah. If you don't pay attention to it, the fucking engine's going to blow up eventually. <laughs> yeah. And that's what happens to men. And what, right? about, yeah. what about fear? Because fear, you know, we, we've, we're seeing a lot of fear, you know, like we've seen in the media being, you know, a lot of it sort of, you could say, is artificially created. Mm -hmm. um, you know, look at these models that we had that, uh, we'll, we'll use the example of Donald Trump then, okay? He's been attacked now for like this 200,000 dead in America. It was originally portrayed as, what, 2.2 .2 million? I think, yeah. uh, you know, uh, Patrick Valance and Chris Whitty did that um, infamous press conference towards the end of September where, you know, pretty much everyone in the country would be dead by New Year's Eve if we didn't do something with the graphs that they were showing, you know. <laughs> the, only people, the only people that would actually be alive on New Year's Day would be the Blue Oyster Cult and they'll just walk around singing, don't fear the Reaper. Uh, <laughs> you know, if, if we to... it's, a, it's a good question with fear, man, because, again, in the self-help world, and um, I think it was Will Smith actually posted it, and um, I, I had to comment on it. And you know, you've got these 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 really popular memes on Facebook where it says, "Fuck fear, fear is the enemy." Yeah. Well, it's not. It's actually a very useful tool to show you something, right? So, if there's a rattlesnake in your fucking bedroom, there's going to be a level of fear that comes up in you to keep your distance from it, because if the fin bites you, there's a high probability you're going to fucking die. <laughs> yeah. if, you're standing on edge of, if you're standing on the edge of a mountain with no parachute or anything kind, and you experience fear, right? If you don't pay attention to that, and you jump off the, that cliff, right? 
there's a high probability you're going to die. And this is what I said, like, uh, what I commented to, like on Will Smith's sin. I'm like, it's just bullshit. There's a healthy level of fear, right? And the fear is there to, it's just an alarm in your body. It's there to show you something, okay? I'm potentially in danger. Now, there is the other flip side of it now where, um, <clears throat> you know, we live in a world where people are, are frightened to speak their truth because they're worried about what other people will say about them um, or, you know, or, you know, being outcasted by their family people, well, again, people are afraid not to go out without, without a mask or they're afraid, out, they're, 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 yeah. they're, they're afraid not to act you know in wales now i've seen yeah. it i've seen it in my own you know we've got these these ministers saying oh you can't go to any other household you can't meet your loved ones and as like we discussed before we we, we started recording the show today you know you, we've got people that that are, are adhering to that you know it, it, it's like i i was i had this issue sort of over the weekend where uh, i won't go into the details of it but the the crux of the matter was was okay first of all it was fearful because someone vulnerable in our family might get <coughs> the virus and could have an adverse effect of that. That's a fear I can understand, and that's a fear I would accept. But then it went from that to a fear of I could get arrested, or you could get arrested, or we could get arrested, because mm -hmm. of the way these this, these laws have been changed. You know, mm. and I suppose the only thing it's going to take for us to actually spin this back or change this back around is to stand up. And I mm -hmm. think, you know, is is it the fact that this fear, even though it's being perpetrated on us? is showing us our own weaknesses because if we didn't have those weaknesses in the first place or if we didn't have that, like you said, that internal, that productive internal conversation, um, like, like the, one of the ways I, I had it, for, I always say I had, I had it from spirit and this is through the, the different experiments we've done on the channel. It was one reference they made to the fake policeman and the fake policeman was like this kind of character I'd created after there was a things happening earlier on in my life and I, I got worried about being arrested I, I was actually in a situation where I could genuinely end up finding myself in a situation where I would be sat across from a policeman asking me about something that I wasn't involved in but I knew people who directly were and that was quite frightening but that image carried over for many many years afterwards and it was kind of like the, the, the response that we had was the fake policeman signals the rethink so is mm. it the case of like you know, for pe for people who are having this fear now of having this fear of getting arrested or having this fear of getting this virus or having this fear of, God forbid, infecting someone else or having this fear of all oh, these draconian laws are being put down on us now. How do you, how, what is that fear showing them then, I suppose, is the question I want to ask. Yeah, I, again, I don't know what it's showing them. That's the thing. Like, if I bring it, it's easy for me to say what it's showing me because okay. I, I don't know. Yeah, I don't yeah. know what it's showing them. So I'll give you an example. I'll give you an example. Okay, so I, I'm not going to wear a mask. Okay, there's a level of fear that comes up of that because I know there's going to be some confrontation, right? Yeah. There'll be some confrontation. Someone, somewhere is going to be some confrontation. Now, there's a, there's a level of fear there. So I said to myself, okay, what is this fear showing me about my, what's this fear showing me about my life? Okay. I am fearful of confrontation. Okay. Why am I fearful of confrontation? Well, the truth is you don't really know how to, uh, how to look after yourself properly. You don't know how to protect yourself if there is confrontation. Okay. I could get hurt. So, so yeah, could get hurt, right? Something could happen. Okay. So what is the solution to that? Okay. The solution to that is, You've been talking about doing boxing and Brazilian jiu-jitsu for ages. You've not followed through with it. Now it's time to do it, right? So you can, not to go out there and start fighting people. I don't want to do that. But so I'm confident in myself that I can look after myself. So that's what I've done. I started learning more boxing. I started uh, watching Brazilian jiu-jitsu, stuff like that. And what happens is that fear isn't as tense as it was before. There's still a level of, okay, there's going to be some kind of confrontation, but it's not as intense as it was before, right? So, you know, when, when it comes to fear, fear, you know, you have to ask yourself, okay, so what is this showing me about my life? So, for example, for you, like, I wear this mask maybe because I'm frightened of, of transmit, like, I'm, the theory is I'm frightened of transmitting, it, transmitting, if I catch it, transmitting to someone that is vulnerable. Okay, what's the solution to that? Okay, I wear a mask. Uh, or I don't go and see them. 
what's the solution to that? Yeah. Okay. That's and, and, and that's okay as well, right? It's okay. Because I don't wear a mask, right? Like I don't I, I don't believe most of this, but I did stay away from my nan for a period of time because I'm like, she is old and vulnerable and there is something out there that is affecting elderly people. Yeah. So the concern I wasn't a fear like here's the thing as well is is people use the word fear a lot. I'm I'm frightened of this, I'm frightened of that, I'm frightened of this. Well, what if it's not fear? What if it's just a concern? The yeah. concern was for me was my nan. So I'm like, okay. So to eradicate that concern, we'll just isolate away from my nan. We'll do some Zoom fucking face calls and that shit with her. And we, we'll just isolate for a little while. Like, we will respect that for my nan, you know? Yeah. So, yeah. yeah. But it, it, we know the name of the thing affecting old people in this country. It's called the fucking Tory party. So I just, I just wanted to clarify that. <laughs> to be fair, but yeah. Labour's arguing for stricter measures, so I think uh, I think it's both of them. Well, yeah, but they can't. They, they're arguing for stricter measures. They're not actually imposing it like the fucking Tories, are they? So, um, I, yeah, I, I fear, like in our game, right? Fear is the same. Comes up the same thing, right? It's a bit of a bugbear because. For us, fear is what we find that negative energy is trying to create, right? So in our in in my like I've been doing this a long time, and I always found it was the it was the 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 real Achilles heel of trying to convince people of like spiritual things and 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 how love. And these things are like our shields and our weapons. But the you you know the way the fear is being used at the moment is in the same realms. It's being used to subdue and control. Mm-hmm. And I think, you know fear. I think it does that anyway because fear will stop you taking that bungee jump. You know it stops you taking that leap. I know, and I think you know it's it's that's what it's doing. It's putting the brakes on everything at the minute, and they're using it. I mean, if you look at Sage, I mean, they're all about controlling the populace, and that's where they've taken most of their advice from, is how to control us. And I think people are afraid of losing the little bit of reality that they've sort of feel that they've achieved. You know, the little bit of like, you know, the 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 sixty two inch fucking TV and their little car outside and their little world and they get going on only twice a year. Mm. Speaking of it's gonna take that from them. Mm. And I think fear, like you say, is, is people that don't understand what fear is showing them or how fear works, right? Um, will easily be controlled and manipulated by fear. You know? Yeah. Will easily be controlled and manipulated by fear. You know, it, like it's it's just perfect, like what you're talking about, like the the sign. You know, wear a mask. They don't say wear a mask to protect yourself. They say wear a mask to protect others. So that's that's it. Because then then what you do is you just get called selfish if you don't wear a mask. Because it's not about protecting you; it's about protecting others, right? If you don't vaccinate, you're selfish because you're going to harm other people. It's it's very it's very manipulative and stuff like that. And I see through, after, like through doing what I've done. If I didn't do this stuff, I wouldn't see through that stuff myself. You know, I'd probably fall into it. I'd be like, oh, I best wear a mask, I best do this, and, and fall for all these manip- manipulation t- tactics and stuff like that, and all these fear driven tactics because, unfortunately, <clears throat> fear gets results. And that's, 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 you know, that's what they're doing. I think, well, it's a little, uh, sorry, Jack, it is a little bit of a downfall in our vaccine clause, right? And that is for the simple fact is if you all get vax, if, if the majority of people want to get vaccinated, don't bitch me for not getting vaccinated because you're safe. I'm not. Mm. It's me yeah. who's in fucking hard way. So exactly. get up your ass. And that's the way I'm going to be with it. If you want to get vaccinated, carry on. But yeah. I'm not. But keep your fucking nose out of what I want to do because that's on me. It doesn't fall on you. If you're vaccinated in your world, you're fine. I'm not. I'm the one that's going to cop for it. And that's the way I'm going to treat it because... It, you know, it, they are, and I keep saying it, me and Jazz have been saying it, people we've talked on this show, they, they're going to fucking try it. 
Well, yeah, it'll come. It'll come very similar, like you know, to the masks. It's like uh, again, yeah. you're not wearing a mask. You're you're wearing a mask. You know, in regardless, I'm not necessarily anti or against wearing a mask. I'm not. I'm not. Um, there's certain circumstances where possibly it could work. Whatever, right? And the, the, at the end of the day, I don't put myself in a situation where I have to wear one anyway. So. I tend to sort of stay out of the argument as much. As I said, this is the first time I had to go shopping. And it's like, uh, my partner said, well, why don't we start shopping online? I'm like, well, no, because at the end of the day, I'm not having that anxiety affecting me again. I haven't been outside properly in about four or five months um, because, you know, there was other arrangements made and that sort of thing. I sooner or later have to get back to living a normal life. So if, if that's something I've got to put up with for about half hour on a Friday... Uh, whilst I do my weekly sort of shop, then so be it. You know, um, at the at the end of the day, it's, it's from 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 my sort of perspective, I'm not necessarily that issue. That issue. My issue is because I can't defend myself. If someone decides to have a pop at me and it gets physical, I can't bloody see them, so I'm screwed. But I'm damn not gonna stop. Let that stop me from actually living my life and being out in public and that sort of thing. But where that gets um difficult on a psychological level is the fact you get these people saying oh well these people are not wearing masks they are not protecting others where well, it's like you said you know if 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 you're wearing a mask essentially you're protected um mm -hmm. you know if you're keeping a distance from someone else then you know you are protect you're doing everything you can and you're doing everything sensible to protect yourself which at the end of the day you know i've, all, I've always advocated do what you feel is right to protect you and protect those around you why the hell does that need to be mandated why the mm -hmm. hell the government have to get but this is where it creates that psychological effect is what you will have is that will transfer onto vaccines if there's people you've already got boris johnson like in, in his speech to the united nations calling people who are anti-vaccinations nut jobs now yeah there are people that jump on the conspiracy bandwagon and that sort and that sort of thing i always say to people you know at the end of the day any form of medication needs open and honest discussion and it needs accountability which you don't have with vaccines you don't you don't have that kind of um you know you can't openly sue well the, the these these manufacturers um there's a fund available but i don't believe it's them that actually pay that out but at the end of the day my issue wouldn't be you know if if there was a a vaccine that was proved to work i wouldn't necessarily be against it my issue would be that you know the, the the it's been what five years it's taken us to do actually um develop a vaccine normally they take 10 years it's if they're telling me to have one after 12 months that's when i start to get a bit fishy because you know suddenly out of nowhere we've we've developed this this vaccine after 12 months mm, yeah that that i would have an issue with because it doesn't stack up compared to the other vaccines that have been done over the course of five to ten years throughout the course of human history. Yeah, got to agree with that one, Jazz. I mean, it, it you know, it, it, they, they, this, this, if you look, like I've said, we, we, we're on about looking at, we, we've gathered enough evidence on this now, right? And this is mainstream evidence to tell people that this is nonsense and we will we are gonna see the the little things like you got people protesting about clothes right and there's more people now up in arms that you can't buy a pair of fucking pants in tesco's than the fact that you, your average nursing home has fucking covid patients in it and it's that people need to, to start to fucking wake yeah. up to that you no know? yeah it, it's like Stop talking about what you can't buy in freaking Tesco's and talk about what's happening in your local hospital and go and find out if it's fucking inundated with COVID patients and go and find out and go and speak to nurses and doctors. I have. I've done it. I've gone yeah. up and spoke. I found the answers I've been looking for. You know, I've done it. I've tried to get out there. If I could get into an hospital and fucking film it, I'd be there tomorrow. Mm. You know, it's, it's, you want to know the truth, you've got to go and find out. Yeah, and this is what yeah this is what we you know you've got to do. 
And you've got to have that conversation as well, because at the end of the day, you know, you you got to you got to accept that there are people that have have died of COVID, right? Um, you know, I know of people that, that have. Um, again, it's it's made it so ambiguous to make sense out of it, of as to what is actually been going on. And I think that's where you know the, the the craziness has come from. Mike, I've noticed you've been kind of silent for a little while. What's, what's your thoughts on, on on this conversation? No man, no. I, um, what's my thoughts on it, man? Like we spoke before about it, and I think that you know, I think what we were saying earlier about fear. You know, a lot of people being driven by fear. I think people will only really start waking up and start really paying attention as to what's going on to all of this when it actually starts affecting them really yeah. to a degree like say people you know like it's just fucking crazy that you know they they stop the sale of essential stuff you could buy alcohol so alcohol's become essential you know you could go and buy bottles of alcohol but you can't buy clothes I, you know like if that doesn't get people questioning things like i don't know what will i don't know what will and like you said like with the whole vaccination thing, man, like I'd done my research and due diligence in vaccinations before my first boy was born and we decided not to vaccinate. I have not vaccinated. None of us had the flu jab or anything. We've not had nothing. And, um, you know, I, I was actually unwell and I was unwell last week. Um, but the tail end of it came out Friday and I was in bed and I had like diarrhea and sickness. And, and someone said to me, like a friend of mine sent me a message. Yeah. Do you think you got COVID? And I said, I fucking hope so. I said, I hope so, because I've got a 99.97% chance of success of recovering from it. <laughs> I said, I hope it ain't the flu. I'd rather have COVID than the fucking flu. Um, <laughs> it's the thing. Like, the stats and numbers are out there, but the government's still pushing this this thing, right? They're still pushing this thing. I believe now it's... I, I don't believe it's ever been really about health. It's just about them pushing their agenda. You know, um, you know you're allowed to... You know, and, 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 you know, some people might get pissed off with this, but, you know, the Black Lives Matter riots, that's OK, that's acceptable. And then the riots, um, then you've got the peaceful, Extinction protest, rebellion. The, the peaceful protests in London about the lockdown and vaccines and all this stuff. And then you've got riot police out fucking charging the crowd and hitting them and all that. And then you've got the mayor of London saying, this is disrespectful, go home and all that. But then... The weekend after, they've got a big gathering of Muslims and nothing. No right police, no nothing, right? You don't see that in mainstream media. You don't see that in the news. And this is this is the problem. And it comes back to, like, like I've, I've been talking about, about men stepping up and leading on the front foot, where instead I see a lot of men that are just kind of cowering and just doing as they're told because that's, that's what they believe they have to do, right? That's what they believe they have to do. And again... If you want to wear a mask, wear a mask. If you want to stay at home, you want to protect lives, that, that's absolutely fine as well. But don't don't come and attack me without doing your own research. And here's here's the fucking crazy thing. This is how crazy this world is. So the guy that was that, that was a, a verbally attacking me and, and wanted to fight me in the shop, I was there by myself with my two-and-a-half-year-old and my six-year-old, right? And I said to this guy, he come up, and I said, listen, I said, I can't engage... In, in physical activity because if you knock me out I've got two little kids wandering around by themselves without their dad right so obviously his balls grew a lot larger when he realised that I couldn't engage in that so then I got back in line this guy's standing behind me and now here's the thing he, this guy's telling me to put on a mask and he was wearing his mask like this right like that right he didn't even have it covering his nose set it down like that and then he's standing behind me with his wife saying uh, it's stupid, really, because I don't even believe in wearing masks. It's fucking stupid. He said it five times. And I turned around and I said, that's the difference, my friend. I said, you haven't got the fucking balls to not wear the mask because you're worried about what people are going to say to you. Right? Um, you know, nothing happened in the end. We, I kind of went my own way, took my kids and went my own way. And this is this is the whole thing with it, man, is people, it's just creating a big diversity between between us. Yeah. But because people are not doing their own research, they're not looking at stuff. Listen, I've come across a paper. I can send this to you. Um, basically, it's a paper that was written by Dr. Fauci in 2008 that said 
basically saying that half of the deaths um, from the, I think it was the swine flu. H1N1, uh, H1N1 in 2009. Is that the one you're talking about? No, no, no. What was the one? Influenza. When did, when was influenza? That when was, was that? 2009. Okay. Well, okay. So it's one of it was 2008. He's written this, this paper, and it was about a, a, a disease that came out, and and everyone was wearing masks. And anyway, basically, it says that when they've done the research and detox uh, uh, by uh, what do they call it when they cut the bodies open and fucking it's gone out my head autopsy. Now. Autopsy. autopsy. Yeah, the autopsies. What they actually found was, and they've done the research, what they found is only 50% of people died from the disease. The other 50% of people died from respiratory problems from wearing masks, right? From wearing masks. This is Dr. Fauci in 2008, written his paper. I was reading through it. Someone put it up and I was reading through it. And now this is the, 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 the fucking snake, the liar, that's telling us that we have to wear masks now. Now, you're going to get more cases rising now because winter season's coming. People wearing masks. You're going to get mildew in the masks, right? They're breathing back in all their own toxins, right? And it's going to cause problems with their breathing and that. Cause problems with their breathing. What does COVID supposedly do? Cause problems of breathing. And they just put it down as COVID. When in fact, the actual masks, what people are wearing to, to, to stop that fresh air, you're breathing in your own toxins, it's going to cause the problems, you know? So, you know, that's, that's, that's the whole thing, right? You know, it's just all fear mongering. And I think, now it's really more about them pushing their agenda and getting what they want, which is a bit more control, a little bit more power. And I think the problem that we, we have now is um, the government really are dictating to us what we can and can't do, like good little children, you know? You want to wear a mask? Like, we ain't fucking stupid. We ain't kids, you know? Like, don't speak to us like fucking children. You have Boris that coming out blaming everyone for the next spike when he's the one that said go back out and start not not once as he kind of said well you know maybe i made a mistake with this no it's not his fault and that's that's a sign of poor leadership poor leadership poor yeah, leadership absolutely. Absolutely. always pointing the finger never taking responsibility hancock doing it you listen to hancock talk sometimes that geezer ain't got a fucking clue what he's talking about most of the time you've got ferguson right now he's coming out telling us what to do again after getting it drastically yeah, wrong. Yeah, Radio 4 on the weekend. You know, and, and actually breaking lockdown, breaking the lockdown rules to go and sleep with uh, another person's wife. Excuse me. Um, there you go. You know, th this is the thing. And, you, you know, the, lack the, of leadership. That's yeah. what it's called. Lack of leadership from men at the top. And we're following these people. And it's do as I say and don't do as I do. And that's a big problem in the world. A big yeah. problem in the world. Mm -hmm. Absolutely, absolutely. Well, yeah. If you could send that paper over to us, that'd be, that'd be absolutely brilliant. Um, yeah, man. I will. I will. We are kind of working on a project at the moment, and that would actually be really beneficial to that to that project that we're working on. Right, guys, we're coming towards the end of the show. Uh, we've been going for about. Go on. I just wanted to add just another question for Microsoft. Yeah, we've we've yeah we've 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 got a bit of time left, but I was just alerting to the fact that we've got you know probably about fifteen minutes left. Yes. Are you finding are you finding men um coming to you Mike uh, with like issues like that? Are they are they are they coming to your group? What's what's next for you with this? Like, uh, how do you mean, my friend? How do you mean coming to me with what uh, issues like what? Um, you know, like are they coming to you just to, to for guidance? Are you finding like did, are you having more men than you thought would gravitate towards yeah. you? Or? Yeah. Yeah. Yeah, yeah, definitely. Uh, lockdown, lockdown was good for business. <laughs> um, no, but um, <laughs> um, yeah, man, because because so many men now are like a lot of guys. A lot of guys predominantly that that I work with or come to me are guys that predominantly have been burning the candle, like working and neglecting their family duties, neglecting their wife, neglecting their kids, and they've been working and and. Um, or they've used work to kind of escape the way they feel about themselves or guys that are struggling with like their mental health. And again, at the moment, so many guys are being exposed for what's what's really going on in their life at the time. So yeah, there's like a lot of guys that are reaching out and kind of saying like, you know, identify with you, drinking too much. That's another big one, um, obviously, sedating and numbing their lives. So, you know, my, my stuff continues, man. Like I have my groups um, that I take guys through. Um, 
And, you know, I've got one that's starting, I've got a free one that's starting uh, next Tuesday that Jard is in um, at the moment. And um, that's just showing guys some simple things that they could start doing each and every day, just some simple habits to improve, like their mental health, to improve their their relationships as a father and a, as a father and a husband, how to improve their their physical health, how to improve their uh, their finances, sort of thing, you know. So, you know, it's important things. It's kind of like my stuff is to help men to become help men to become more equipped with what's going on in the world. Like life's gonna fucking kick you in the dick, regardless of what you do, right? If you sit, yeah. spend your life indoors, sitting on a set, doing fuck all, you're gonna really experience pain and suffering. Right. If you get out in the world and start living your life, you're going to experience pain and suffering. It's just part of our life and the part of the way it is. And my job is to equip men with the tools and resources to get better and to deal with those times when they come along, man. Do you know what I mean? You know, mm -hmm. and I think nowadays we've never kind of experienced a time when so many men are struggling mentally. You know, the things that, you know, like our grandfather's working on the farm and things like that, they'd be like, don't really feel like it today. <laughs> Yeah. Oh, well, fuck it. I just get on with it. Now it's like, I don't feel like it. I, I don't feel too good. Oh, let's look on Facebook. Oh, look. Oh, Bob's got a new Lamborghini. He looks so fucking happy, that that prick. Right? And then you start comparing yourself to them. So, yeah. you know, we live in very different times now, and it's kind of helping men with that sort of stuff, man. Excellent. 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 Well, any 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 final thoughts, guys? Um, it, you've mentioned the course and everything going on. Where can people find you, Mike? Where can people find you? Um, I know you're on Facebook and Instagram, and yeah. your website. We're going to put everything in the description below. But just for for people who might want to sort of uh, uh, you know ha ha have a quick sort of Google or whatever to uh, and connect with you. How can people connect you? What's the best ways? That best ways is probably my Facebook page um, or Instagram or or email. I like go onto my website and just sign up or give me, send me an email, Michael uh, Michael at michaelhilton.com. My name's spelled M I C H E A L at michaelhilton.com. Um, they're the best way to get in contact with me, man. Contact me, you know. And if you're a guy and you're kind of looking to to build better results in your life and take, you know get a handle on how you're thinking and feeling and create better results and you know reach out man i have like a five day free challenge that i'm starting to do once a month now you know jump on board with that and if it, if it's for you then there's a possibility to go go on further with it if it's not for you well the worst thing that's gonna happen you're gonna get some tools that you can implement into your life to improve your relationship with your wife and kids and your your business or your workplace and just generally in life man you know i, I was generally just intrigued yeah um i i I kind of introduced myself to to the other people the other day, and um, uh, I don't know if you want to join in on this, Rich, or or, or what. But I, I was just intrigued to see to see what it was all about. To be honest with you, so uh, yeah, I, I I'm I'm looking forward to it. Um, what time um, are you is are you allowed to announce what time your first sort of session is starting next Tuesday? Next Tuesday at seven. So I'll be I'll be live in the group next Tuesday at seven. So that will be the first, 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 that will be the first live video and we're going to be talking about like self mindset. That's going to be the first thing, like me not like mental health and mindset, you know, how to improve that, right? Excellent. How to shift your focus from the shit and negativity to the more positive kind of way of living life and that, man. Excellent. Mm. Okay then, well, um, thank you very much for coming on the show. Richard, any final questions, buddy? No, I uh, really interesting. Thanks for coming on the show, Mike. Um, hey, it's good yeah, to meet you, it's, it's yes, it's a subject that I'm passionate about: men's mental health, anybody's mental health, mm. not just men's, anybody's. And it is is something you know we need as a society to open, especially after all this, because the world's never going to be the fucking same again. Mm. So it, you know, it's important. It's important to keep that in check. And don't be afraid. If you need a handout, don't be afraid to come speak to someone. People message me all the time who suffer with mental health. And, you know, I've got a first-hand account of it now. I didn't before, and I still, I still had sympathy and understood it. Uh, so, yeah, just reach out. And, and there's, there's people like yourself, right, who can give you ideas and give you tools to yeah. help yourself. And it's, it's important. It's really yeah. it's, it's and it's silent. And if you don't, if you're someone that's watching and you're struggling and you don't want to,
come into a group, you don't want to do any of that stuff, just reach out to me because I've got plenty of links to videos that I've done that that I can send you, and they'll be he- that, you know they're helpful. They've so, you know some videos I've sent guys have been enough for them. Do you know what I mean? You know yeah. uh, they've gone on and done something with it. So you know, um, yeah, just reach out. That's it. But reach out. Well, thank you very much for coming on the show, Mike. And, You're welcome. Uh, it would be lovely, to ha- be, be lovely to have you on again at, at some yeah. point uh, and, and stay in touch. And, and guys, again, any if, if you want to reach out to Mike or if you feel anything that he has uh, spoken about tonight, uh, doing this this, this, this now debate has been very, any helpful to you, then let us know and you can contact uh, Michael directly using the information in the description box below. Thank you guys for watching. Um, Appreciate it. Thank love, you. Love and light. Me. I've been Jared Walters with Michael Hinton and Richard Oliver. Love and light, everyone. Love and light, para peeps. Take care.